morning and then go live changed it. Okay. Hi, you guys. My name is Jennifer Palfini and I'm your Pampered Chef Independent um, Consultant. And we are going to cook some really fun stuff today. We are going to cook up some chicken fajitas and some uh, guacamole and margaritas, which I'm super excited about. So let's get started. Um, and I'm going to start with the chicken. The camera is still a little bit crooked, but I'm just going to have to go with it, you guys. I'm sorry. Someone's saying something. It's a relaxing video. Okay. Okay, I'm crooked and I don't know what to do about it here, so. Uh, this is why you have a cameraman. And I don't. So, let's just go ahead and just get started and I will, um, camera keeps moving on my iPod, on my tripod. So we're gonna get started with our chicken. Um, and I have my chicken already out and de-thawed. We're going to use, um, I'm gonna follow a recipe here. We're gonna use one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast, okay? So I have some of my chicken here. And then I'm just gonna take my, um, my knife here and just open up the chicken. Oh, actually what I wanted was my kitchen shears, which are right here. Kitchen shears. I easily open my chicken bag up. And drain it. The juices. And got our chicken right there. We're gonna grab our raw crock because we're gonna cook our chicken fajitas, you guys, today in the microwave. I know. I freaked out too when I heard that. I was like, no way can we cook chicken fajitas in the microwave. But let me tell you, you can and you will, and you will love these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chicken and we are just gonna put it into the rock crock. Now the rock crock is just a gorgeous piece of cookware to begin with, but on top of that, it also um, can go up to temperatures up to 752 degrees, you guys. So this means this little baby can go in on your grill, on your broiler, on your stove top, on your oven top, in your refrigerator, in your freezer, um, on your, in your, I said broiler already, right? Yeah, stove top, yeah. Um, and also, it goes in your microwave, which is insane to think that something that can go all those places can also go in your microwave. And in addition to that, it also has a cooker stand, so it could be your total slow cooker solution. So I was thinking about this when I saw this rock crock, and I'm like, where have you been all my life? Because I have a, st I have a slow cooker that just kind of sits in the cabinet, and I use it every once in a while, but wow, this pan can do that and so much more then just slow cook, so it's amazing. So I'm gonna put my chicken in my rock crock. I'm using my large chef's tongs for that. Just gonna pop all that chicken in here. And I've got four pieces of chicken, depending how big your chicken is. This is probably a lot more chicken than I need, but um, I'm gonna do four pieces because I'm having some friends over today for some fajitas and their kids. So I'm looking for something super easy to do. Then I'm gonna take a lime I'm gonna cut my lime in half with my large, with my eight inch chef's knife. And I'm gonna press it with my citrus press. And the citrus press is a wonderful product because juice comes out of the holes here and it also streams down. So if you're doing like a small glass or um, a, um, something with not such a wide diameter, it's great because you won't miss out any of that juice. So I'm gonna do the lime. And I'm going to do my taco seasoning. Now for my taco seasoning, I'm just gonna wipe my hands real quick here. For my taco seasoning, um, Pampered Chef has a wonderful taco seasoning, but I don't have it yet, so I make my own. So I don't like store-bought stuff because I like to kind of control the ingredients myself. So for this version of my taco seasoning, I used a um, chipotle pepper, paprika, cumin, black pepper, salt, a little bit of oregano and a little bit of dried cilantro. So that's what I do. Um, I think one of the most important ingredients in that whole list is the cumin, which gives it that extra tang flavor, and the chipotle pepper. So I have about two tablespoons of that, so I'm just gonna pour it in here. And then I'm gonna take my chef's tongs and I'm just gonna toss it around with that lime juice so we get some good flavor in there. So you can see what I'm doing. So 
So I can't really answer any questions because I can't see the go live from here because it's all the way across my room. So I will try to cross my kitchen. So I'll try to answer questions um, at the end if you have any questions and I'll definitely respond to any of your comments. I love these chef's tongs. What I love about them is they have these, um, you know, they have the, the strainer holes and they also lock when you shut them. There's a little notch here that shuts. And they actually do their job. They actually pick up stuff and grab stuff so easily. And because they are heat resistant, you can use these on your on your cast iron in anything and they will not melt. I don't know about you, but I have tongs in my cabinet right now that have partially melted because of heat. So that is a big requirement for me is that I actually can use them how I wanna use them. So I'm just tossing this around. I like to make sure my stuff is good and coated um, because I want every piece to be equal and nicely coated. Huh. Well, that's two rough starts two days in a row, guys. <laughs> you can plan and plan and plan and plan, but you can never know what's gonna happen when you go live. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we are going to work with um, our bell peppers here. I'm gonna take my Santuco knife. Um, and I think I told you the other day, Santuco knife is kind of my workhorse. I'm gonna cut the top off here. Um, if you're gonna have one good knife in your kitchen, I highly recommend if you know you just have that one kind of like expensive knife that you're gonna invest in and you don't wanna get a chef's knife because some of us are intimidated by the eight inch um, blade and we have to get used to it. The Santuco knife is a wonderful um, choice um, because it grips nicely in your hand um, and it feels good and it, it just is really easy to move around. So we cut off our tops of our peppers. I have a yellow pepper and an orange pepper here. I'm just gonna cut off the tops. And then I'm gonna use this awesome product called the Corinmore to core out my pepper. So this is just gonna scoop everything out for me. Make sure you can see that, what I'm doing here. And it's just like scooping all this stuff out here. Easily. You just wanna figure out which way to use it, which works best for you. This way is what's working best for me. Okay. Pull all the seeds out and tap them out. And there we go there. And now this one, same thing. I'm gonna cut it across on the big side and then the small side, I'm gonna scoop everything out. Well, that worked much easier that time. Okay, perfect. I've used this a couple of times. What I love about this product too is that it also is a, um, a scooper. I'm not a scooper. It's a corn more. So it actually can core out strawberries and hull strawberries really easily and other things that you need to get like the stem out simply. It has these nice edges here to dig. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this up into four chunks. And I'm gonna use another product here that I just love. I got a couple seeds in there, so I'm just gonna scrape those out. I don't know, the seeds don't really bother me so much. It's more the icky stuff in the inside. So I'm just gonna get the rest of these seeds out, scrape them out. Just a few. And I'm gonna take this product called the Quick Slice. And so what the Quick Slice does is, it's gonna make light of all my chopping that I need to do. So I'm just gonna put it on top of here. So the Quick Slice has serrated blades on this side and then the, and on the front, and it's shaped like a V. So it grips and it cuts even slices. So I'm just gonna push it through here. And pop it into my rock rock. I'm gonna do, try to do two at a time. I could do one at a time, but I'm trying to do, see how we can do two. I just like to push the limits on things and see how it goes. I'm just gonna pop them into my rock rock there. And you're just doing like a slight rocking motion on here to get them all the way out. And that's that's a big time saver there, right? They're right there, you guys. Just this product alone saves me, I'm sure, hours in the kitchen a week just because I take all my produce. This, um, the quick slice is really good for medium to soft products. So like um, mozzarella, some of your vegetables, your fruits, strawberries, olives, even grapes I've done in here. Okay, perfect. So we're done with that. Now we're gonna take an onion and we're gonna cut the onion in half. I'm gonna use my chef's knife. So now I said you might be intimidated by the chef's knife. I wouldn't be. You just wanna make sure you hold it properly. Um, Pampered Chef products are designed for left or right people. 
And our knives have a bolster um, on either side that you put your, th your thumb on. Lay your finger across the tang and just make sure you get a good hold of it. That's really all you have to do. I've already peeled my onion and I've cut off the sides to save time. So I'm just working on my prep, you guys. And then it says I'm going to just thinly slice the oven. That's <laughs> oven. Thinly slice the onion with the knife and place the slices into the pan. So I'm going to slice. I'm thinking which way I want to go. I think I'm going to go this way because I want them to be kind of long. I'm going to slice these up thin. You can see how good, what a nice thin slice I get here. And I'm going to do um, two small onions here. So I'm going to do those. This is two medium onions. I'm feeling like that might be enough onion. But I did make this the other day, and I felt like there wasn't enough onion with one onion, so I'm going to do two. Um, and here's another product that I love that I'm just going to tell you about because it is the reason I actually got into Pampered Chef. So um, during shelter in place, and I don't know if I told you this story or not, I was really, um, I was just becoming angry in the kitchen. Like I just wasn't happy in the kitchen. I wasn't having fun in the kitchen. And I was tired of um, shows on TV that just weren't realistic, that you know I know for a fact now <laughs> have a whole bunch of assistants and wardrobe and makeup people and people behind the scenes making everything look all pretty. And my kitchen doesn't look like that. So what I really loved about Shelter in Place was Chef Michael Simon did a show from his actual home in New York. He's actually a Clevelander, so I'm a huge fan um, of him, and I've been for a long time. And he did a show that was so realistic, like what you have in your pantry, what you have in your house, what spices you have. Because at the time, gosh, some of us weren't even able to get eggs, right? So he did that, and one of the products he had, and he did this show for 52 days, every day at five o'clock in his home. It was amazing. Like I just felt so connected to it. He talked to the audience. He did have someone that would bounce back and give him you know, feedback and tell him um, questions and stuff like that. Like, cause literally you guys, I can't see what you're saying right now on the go live. So I can't do that. But um, one of the things he had is he had this scraper and this scraper, this $10 scraper from Pampered Chef is the entire reason that I ordered from Pampered Chef I went to a party and it kind of changed my life. So this scraper, every time I look at it, I think of Chef Simon, I think of that story, and I think about how what he taught me in the kitchen about being happier and more joyful in the kitchen really translated into a big change in me. So that's what my mission is with this whole Pampered Chef thing, is to bring joy into your kitchen. And a lot of it has to do with efficiency in your kitchen. So this product is gonna just slide off my onions into the bowl. And I love this chopping mat too because the prep chopping mat because I can move it around easily. So I have it on a, I have it on top of a cutting board. You don't have to. You can just put it right on your counter. You're not going to cut through it. You will get cut marks, but that's okay because you're using it to cook. So what do you want? Okay. So I'm gonna. So on that note, I'm gonna cut on the other uh, the other part of my onion. And um, again, with the chef's knife, you just want to get a nice rocking motion going. And you cut right through there, some nice thin slices. And your girls are like, she is gonna cut her fingers. Now remember, I'm not a chef, I'm just a mom, and I'm just someone who loves to cook. So I'm sure there's some chefs out there who would correct some of my methods and stuff like that. And that's okay, we can always learn. You know, like you guys, some people gave me some feedback about I was in the dark the whole time and that I needed to get a little bit more prepared. So I took that feedback and I rolled with it. And um, hopefully we all can take feedback from people in a nice way and not get upset about it. I think one of the challenges of our world today is that people just get so upset about things and just, um, and just you know, need to let go a little bit. Okay, that's all my onions. It seems like a lot of onions, but I'm gonna go with it. Again, I'm gonna use my pot here. Yeah, I have a lot of onions in here. I love onions, though, you guys. I can't get enough of them in things like fajitas. So we got our two onions in here, and we got our chicken in there, and we are good to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to, um, we're gonna take this all and we're gonna press some garlic on top. So I've got my garlic slices here. It says that we're gonna use two garlic slices, two garlic cloves, and this is our garlic press. And what I love about this product is it actually does what it's supposed to do, it presses garlic all the way through. 
It's all through. This is a small one. And you just scrape it out there like that. And then when you're done, you take this little brush and you just clean it out very simply. Okay, got another one here. I got a bigger one. I feel like I might do three. I'm going to throw another one in there too. Because I like a lot of garlic. Okay, so you watch how that all comes out. You see that, you guys? So awesome. We love garlic in my home. Um, I buy it already peeled. But if you um, put a peeled garlic in here, you could get the same results. See, I even got that little bit of extra just by moving it around. All the garlic is out of there, and it's um, flat and empty on the inside. Okay, so now all we're going to do, this is where the magic happens, you guys, is we're going to put a lid on it. Um, the garlic's in there. Everything's all in there, stacked up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This is gonna be great. Um, and I'm gonna put it in the microwave for 12 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna put it in for 15 minutes. I put it in for 12 last time and it didn't cook all the way through because I need it to get to 165 degrees. So I had to put it in a couple more times. So I'm gonna err on the side of caution because I've made this before. I'm probably, go about, I'm probably gonna go like 16 minutes. So I'm gonna put it in the microwave. I'll be right back. The whole thing goes in the microwave. Oh, 16 seconds off. Hold on. <laughs> so while that's cooking, we're going to work on our next dish, which is going to be our guacamole, which I'm super excited about because I found this new way to make guacamole in our manual food processor, and I just love it. It gives me great results all the time. So we are going to start with, so this is the manual food processor. So let me tell you a little bit about this. Um, I have a food processor, just like you have a food processor in your house too, but I don't use um, it as much because it's bulky and it's hard to clean and it's kind of a pain for little jobs. So this is great for your like your little jobs, your sauces, your toppings, stuff like that. And what's great about it is that it has this kind of triple layer blade. So it does a great job of chopping and mincing small things um, like herbs and things like that. Like I use this as my herb kind of... Um, my herb, cut, my herb uh, mincer when I want to do that. And I also use it for like guacamole or some toppings. I've used it actually for a smoothie. Um, if I don't want to run the blender in the morning for my daughter, a very simple smoothie, like with some banana and strawberries and some yogurt. Um, and um, if I want a little more chunkier, you know, on thing and I don't want to make a lot of noise. And also, um, what else have I used it for? Yeah, cutting onions and all that kind of stuff too. So that's what we're going to use. It's just, we're going to make our whole thing of guacamole in this manual food processor. It has a great lid, and when you unlock the lid, it has a lock on it. It's a pumping motion that chops all your stuff. So we're gonna start with that, and then when you're done, you take the blade out, and you put a lid on it, and you can store it in your fridge. So it's very multifunctional. I love it for all those reasons. Okay, so we're gonna start with chopping some. Um, we're gonna get a red onion here. I'm just gonna take the, and I'm just gonna cut this into four chunks. And then I'm gonna take um, a jalapeno and I'm gonna use my corn more again. And I'm just gonna, I cut it in half already. So I'm just gonna scrape out the insides, just like I did with my peppers. Oops, dropped it. I love this corn more. I'm gonna chunk, I'm gonna just cut that into, um, into um, a few chunks too. Four chunks. And then I'm going to put um, the jalapeno and the onion into the manual food processor. And then I'm going to add some garlic. I'm gonna chop up, I'm just gonna, um, my garlic's kinda small, I should've got a bigger piece of garlic since I used it on the other thing. I'm gonna clean out this because I'm gonna get a fresh piece of garlic in here. I love garlic, so I feel like there can never be enough garlic in things. Some people don't necessarily agree with me, so it's okay. Okay, let's go ahead and there we go. We got every little bit of that garlic out of there. Put that garlic in there. Okay, 
And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to get some cilantro. Now this is a product called our Herb Saver. So many things I love about this, you guys, because I um, buy herbs, because I love cooking with fresh herbs, um, or preparing things with fresh herbs, and nine times out of 10, they go in the trash after day two because they just don't last. So what, this, what, the, herb, uh, what the Herb Saver does is, you actually put water in the bottom of the bin here, and the tips of your herbs, like where you cut them, actually lay a little bit into the water or not, and it creates a nice condensation inside so your herbs stay fresh. Um, I've overstuffed mine, I'll admit it, because I have a lot of herbs right now. But I have, um, I have mint in here. Oh, it smells so good. Basil and cilantro. So I'm just gonna pull some cilantro out and I'm just gonna toss it into my manual food processor. Um, yeah, stem and all, I know. I'm crazy like that, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then what's great about this herb saver is that it goes right into your refrigerator and um, it fits in your refrigerator door. And because it's this nice bright green color, you're not gonna forget about it. Because every time you open your refrigerator door, you're gonna see it and you're gonna remember, oh, I need to use those fresh herbs, they're gonna go bad. And so far, my herbs that I put in here have lasted about one and a half to two weeks, depending on the herb. So, I mean, they last like two to three days in my refrigerator normally, or if I put them, or I go through that process of putting them in a wet paper towel in a baggie, it's just, you know, it's just not that great of a process either. So this is, I mean, it's, it's the herb saver. It's saving my herbs, okay? So I'm just gonna um, put some cilantro in here. I'm just gonna cut it just in half a little bit so it's a little bit more organized. I might be putting a little bit too much in here, but we'll see how it happens. I always say we'll see what happens because I like to see how things go. Um, so I could tell you to do it or not. Okay, so we're just gonna chop up the onions and the mixed garlic and the cilantro. So you have the jalapeno in here and the red onion. And you can see what's happening. It's all kind of chopping up and it's mixing around. So we're just gonna keep going a little bit more. This is my one of my favorite products from Pampered Chef. I use this probably three to four days a week. Um, I use it to, I steam broccoli and then I mince the broccoli um, to, uh, sneak it in macaroni and cheese for my daughter. Actually, it's not even a sneak, she just loves it now. So you can see how that's all nicely chopped up in there. Can you see that? Okay, great. You know, I'm just gonna check this go live because I'm gonna make sure that there's no feedback that you can't see me or something. I think yay. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so look at that, you guys. Look how easy that was. No tears, no mess. No chopping, all in the manual food processor. And I tell people if you're looking to buy the handiest product for your fridge, for your um, home, get a manual food processor. It's amazing. It's an amazing product. Okay, so now we're gonna take um, half of a lime, and again with the citrus press, we're gonna press it, and we're just gonna pop it right in there. Oh, don't you guys think this is gonna taste delicious? Oh, I can't wait. Fresh guacamole. Okay, so we got that done. Just gonna wash my hands. All this citrus going on here. We're gonna add juice, we're gonna juice the lime. And next we're gonna get our avocado. We've got two here. I'm gonna use my paring knife just to cut around it. And then I'm gonna twist it, split it in half, and I'm gonna pop out the pit. Um, and a note on my knives. My knives are Pampered Chef knives, and I gotta say they're amazing. I actually won them for being a consultant when I hit 5,000 in sales. Um, I actually got them for free. And these knives have been life changing. I'm just gonna scoop this out. These knives has been, with my mix and scrape, these knives have been life changing in my kitchen because I realized even though my knives were gorgeous and they were pretty and they were just, I loved them for a long time, they weren't really doing their job. They weren't as sharp. They weren't easy to hold because they didn't have, they weren't made of the Sapaka wood which is just so comfortable to hold in your hand, you're not going to drop these knives. Um, I've dropped knives, you know, I've cut myself with knives. I will say these knives are super sharp and I have cut myself with this knife. Not this one, but one, another one in particular. Just because um, I was just kind of going like this and I went like that. I mean, they're super sharp and they're amazing and they are gonna do exactly what you needed to do. I also didn't know that you needed, I didn't realize because I've learned so much with my Pamper Check journey so far that I just didn't know that you need to use different knives for different things. Yeah, I know a steak knife, a bread knife, stuff like that, but I didn't really realize that, you know, that um, 
there was a thing called a tomato knife um, and that different knives could cut different ways. So I'm just using my paring knife here just to get this apart. I'm gonna pop out this pit. Um, and so it's just been totally fun to uh, revolutionize my kitchen. I've really transformed my kitchen um, with my kit that I got from Pampered Chef and also with all the things I've won. So far I've won um, you know, every single reward I could win um, for my sales. Um, and that's just because I love doing this. I love helping people out in the kitchen. So if you like the kitchen and you like to cook or you like to help people and you want to learn, this business is great. I'm definitely making more than chump change here and I'm having a blast doing it. In fact, I just hit another sales milestone a couple weeks ago and I'm going to get a little Tiffany's necklace from it. So yay, that's going to be so fun. I can't wait. Okay, so you see I scooped it all out and I, and, um, I hate to waste. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that all into the mango food processor. And I'm gonna wash my hands. It's got that lovely avocado on them. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up again. And I'm gonna start mixing. I'm gonna push this down a little bit. Might have wanted to do the avocados in a couple of chunks um, and I like my guacamole to be a little bit chunky so however you like your guacamole to be is how long you should pump it for but you just want to make sure it's mixed you see what's happening here I just need to adjust this a little bit so I get a lot of stuff going on here and I want to make sure it's all mixed up Tasting so good. Oh, I know. I want to add a little salt. You might not want to add salt. I always say, just like Chef Simon taught me, that anything you do in your kitchen should be about what you love in your kitchen, not what other people tell you to do. Okay, it's starting to go around. started here also this is what something I did on the other time too that not this time is you want to make sure that your avocado is ripe because <laughs> if it's not ripe it's not going to give you the best result okay. it never takes this long so here we go okay you can see our guacamole is all mixed up here that and I may pump it a few more times. I think there might be something stuck on our display is what's happening. There we go. Okay. So like I said with the guacamole, what you can do is I got some nice chunks in there too, so you can see that. <gasps> so good. I am going to taste. Oh, yummy guys. So, um, and like I said um, earlier, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pop a lid on it. Your guacamole is done, guys. Okay? I'm gonna put that over here, and we are gonna start on our margaritas while our chicken's in the oven. So, for margaritas, we're gonna use our um, cooking blender here. Make sure you can see that. Can you see that? Okay, good. 
And I'm going to follow another Pampered Chef recipe, which tells me exactly what to do. And I'm going to go ahead and use a cup of tequila. Tequila! A half a cup of triple sec, which I'm using a mix-ish sort of thing. Um, but you make your margaritas how you want to make them. I'm going to use some agave, and I want a fourth a cup of that. So I'm going to do a fourth a cup of agave. And this one here. I need to switch this around. This is our adjustable measuring cups. I'm doing a fourth of a cup of agave. There we go. So you can do dry and wet things in it. And also, it has a nice plunging function that if you have something like mayonnaise or something like that, you could, um, you could pop it all out and not waste anything. So here's my agave. And then I'm gonna do some, some lime, freshly squeezed lime juice. And I'm actually gonna do a little orange in here too. So I'm just gonna get my citrus press out again. Give it a quick rinse. Avocado on it. And I'm gonna put oranges in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a glass of water. So um, with the oranges, I've sectioned them into fours because um, the whole orange won't exactly fit in here. And again, you can see it goes like, woo! Look at that. Every little bit of that orange is gone. Some more lime. You can see I already started squeezing some this morning. I mean, I love to have fresh citrus in my margaritas, so um, this citrus press is just like a dream. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I have one of those ones that you go like this, you know, you, you twist it yourself. It does not even give you results. And plus also, this also will um, not let seeds go in too, which is great. Um, all the seeds will come out, will stay in the product or in the in the actual uh, fruit. Okay, so I got about three fourths of a cup of orange juice and lime juice in here that I'm gonna add. And then I'm going to do ice, six cups of ice. Let me get my ice out. Got my ice all ready and guess what? Looks like my fajitas are done. This is good timing. So I'm gonna put my ice in here. fantastic safety feature. We need to make sure that the lid is locked so your kids can't start this blender unless this lid is locked. And it's not the most, um, it's intuitive for you, but your kids might not be able to figure out so easily. Because it has a little lip here that you have to go around. And then it says, hi, we're locked. And we're just gonna go ahead um, and custom blend this. I went through a lot of settings on this before, but I'm just gonna go through it again because there's nine settings on this blender that are just amazing. So we have a smoothie setting. Alternate milk setting, which is for your almond milk, your coconut milk, whatever kind of milk you're gonna make. We have a grind setting, which is you put your peanuts, your almonds, your cashews in here with nothing else, and you will have butter. Amazing. In two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, there's a heated wash setting. I've run that for you, I believe, and that is 
two, around two minutes, the temperature goes up to 140 degrees. You do not want to get this blender um, wet on the bottom because there's electrics here. So they actually have a heated cycle for you that will clean it for you with three cups of water and a little bit of dishwashing soap. Okay, the soup mode is to cooks to 212 degrees for a certain amount of time. Heated puree cooks, I just actually did this last night in my test for tomorrow's dinner. Um, heated puree cooks to 212 degrees and it takes about 30 minutes. So it's how you make your fresh sauce, sauces and soups with soup, puree, and sauce. Jam goes to 220 minutes, I mean it's 220 degrees, and sauce goes to 176 degrees. So, um, and there's also custom blend and custom heat and also pulse. So um, the key here is that this is a cooking blender. Now so far I've made a smoothie and I'm making margaritas, but this is so much more because tomorrow when I cook, I'm gonna make a heated sauce from raw vegetables, which is amazing. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna put it onto custom heat. I'm sorry, custom heat, custom blend. Make sure I don't miss it. And I'm gonna start at level one and I'm gonna go for 20 seconds and I'm gonna to go to level nine. margaritas are looking oh it's perfect now if you want it a little more icy you probably want to go a few less seconds let's just try oh my gosh I'm on mental vacation right now these margaritas are so good so let's get our margarita glass and see how this thing pours out now we've got our guacamole done so all we need to do is finish our fajitas and look at this look at this margarita you guys I don't know about you, but I feel like a frozen margarita is always a hard thing to get right. They're either too watery or they're chunky ice. And I'm telling you right now, this is mm, perfection. And I'm just going to top it with a little bit of Grand Marnier. If I can open the bottle. Everything's at a weird angle when I turn the other way, so... I'm just gonna do a little dab. A little dab will do ya. Now, if you're ever making margaritas for your kids, um, you know, don't put the alcohol in. Get some nice lemonade, get some ice, put a little lime in there, and they'll feel like your kids will feel like they're having a margarita too. I can't wait for my daughter to be able to have margaritas with my husband and I. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, that is that. Let me just move this out of the way and let's make room for our fajitas. First of all, with the fajitas, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the temperature. It is critically important that you make sure that your chicken is cooked. And for this chicken to be cooked, we need it to be at 165 degrees. So I'm just gonna quickly rinse off my mat. Look how easy that is, guys. This mat, these mats are just so fantastic. I'm moving this stuff around in your kitchen. And I'm gonna move my rock crock to here, so I'm just gonna slide over my blender. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for margaritas, you guys. <clears throat> and I'm gonna get my um, my little mitts. Silicone mitts are chopped. I could do like a little puppet show of these for my daughter. <laughs> and let's just check and make sure that that chicken is fully cooked. It's a little awkward to get out of my microwave. That's part of the challenge here. So I'm gonna put it right on the stove because I know that this crock crock can go anywhere in my kitchen. I don't have to worry about it exploding or getting ruined. I'm gonna take my chef's tongs. I'm gonna give them a quick rinse here. So I know there's raw chicken on there, so I wanna make sure I get that all off. And I'm just 
going to toss this around a little bit and see what this chicken looks like. Okay, you can't see this, so I'm going to move it over here. It's still hot, so I'm going to take my little mitts here and put it over here. I'm going to move my margarita out of the way. It's so tempting right now, you guys. And I'm going to just make sure that the temperature is right at 165 degrees. And if it's not, I'm going to pop it in because we still have time here. So we're going to go ahead and measure that. Now, Pampered Chef has a wonderful thermometer. I don't have it yet. And my husband and I got one for a Napoleon grill that we have, so I use that one. Um, and it, oh, this one has Bluetooth, so it says 140 degrees. So this, you probably need to put these for a few more minutes, but let me just check and make sure, because sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the um, chicken to, see this is 153 degrees. I'm gonna reset it. Because they didn't start at zero. Okay, let's do this again. Okay, we'll check it again. Got a whole lot of onions going on here too. Okay, I'm gonna put it in because um, I'd rather err on the side of caution for another 50 minutes. So I put it in for about 16 minutes. I'm just gonna pop it in for another three. And we're fine. We're not. We're having our whole dinner almost all ready, you guys. So what I'm gonna do while I'm doing that. my uh, tortillas out of the fridge. That's pretty good. That's the only thing I forgot to get out this morning with the tortillas. I'm going to turn this thermometer off and turn it on again. And for my tortillas, what I'm going to do is I am going to put these in our micro cooker. I'm going to pour them in there. These micro cookers are fantastic because what they do is they keep food moist and warm. So when you're going to reheat stuff that you've already cooked, you know how you put it in the microwave it always gets dry? It does not get dry. And for things like tortillas, it's perfect. So I'm gonna put about four tortillas in there. And I'm gonna pop those in for about 25 seconds. Once my, um, once my two minutes is up on my, uh, on my bonitas. But I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for my fajita toppings. And I've got all ready to go here. I've got my cheese, my salsa, and my chips. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of guacamole because I am hungry to have breakfast today. Oh my gosh, you guys, so good. Mmm, I'm gonna just taste all the delicious flavors in this guacamole. Mmm, I'm so excited. Two of my friends are coming over today with their kids, so we're gonna have my daughter, three other kids, and two friends here, and another friend who's with my daughter this morning for some delicious eats. So I'm so excited about that. And margaritas! Okay, looks like we're almost done here. So once my fajitas are done, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice up my chicken, plate it up, and we're good. Um, you can see we already got our, our margarita ready to go, and it's just, so good. Oh, mm, I love that I use a little bit of orange juice, a little orange and a little lime both um, because it just adds such extra good flavor. And again, if you're not, a, if you don't, if you don't drink, that's fine. Make yourself like ices in this thing. Make yourself frozen lemonades in this thing. Um, you, you make yourself frozen coffee in this thing and you will get this perfect ice perfection that I'm talking about right here. Um, there's so many things you can do with this blender. I've just been blown away, and I personally have owned five. This is my fifth blender in my lifetime of blenders. I've blown out four of them. Um, this is my fifth, fifth blender or sixth? I can't remember. I've blown out four of them. Um, one of them in the middle of the dinner party, which that was a lot of fun. I was making gazpacho, and my blender literally blew out. And um, my last one is a top brand blender, which I did love, but it didn't have half the functionality that this does. So I'm going to go ahead and get my um, fajitas out again. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on these. The micro cookers come in one quart, two quart, and three quart size. This is the three quart size. 
It also has a steamer function to it, uh, a steamer insert, so you can steam. But you can steam your vegetables, vegetables in any of these, so that's not really a problem. Let's get these fajitas out before I get a margarita buzz going. <laughs> Which is gonna happen. Because I don't really drink margaritas that often. Okay. Now we get our fajitas again. I'm pretty sure we're at a temperature, but I'll make sure I go ahead and check it. Turn it on. Watch it roll up. This is the boring part, you guys, waiting for temperature yet to happen. Okay. This one. Okay. We're good there. Check that one. 165. Actually, 165 exactly. That's perfect. Okay, perfect. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to slice up. I'm going to get my chef's tongs. going to slice a nice piece of chicken up. And you can see all these onions and peppers are all deliciously ready to go. Everything's been cooking in these delicious juices. Let me just turn this off because it'll keep beeping until I do. Turn up. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's get our chicken out. We're gonna nice chicken breast here. Four of them in that garlic and that lime and just that nice taco seasoning. You can see the taco seasoning still on there and the chicken is so moist you guys look at that just dripping with goodness so i'm just going to go ahead and cut that i'll try doing this with my chef's i'm going to do this with my chef's knife i'm thinking to get some nice thin pieces here yep perfect look at that chicken you guys perfectly cooked Gonna cut a couple pieces in half to pop into a fajita. And I'm gonna pop my um, my fajita um, tortillas in here for 25 seconds. And get all my salsa and my cheese and my guacamole ready to go and tortillas are going to be done and that is going to be our fun afternoon with the kids in the house the fajita is nice and warm so i'm just going to throw some Sour cream on there, how I like to have my fajitas. I'm gonna have some little bit of cheese. And some of that nice chicken. That's all ready to go. Perfect. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of salsa on there. And I'm gonna top it with some guacamole on the side. some chips and maybe even some on my fajita itself and maybe a little more cheese there too I need some more cheese there and oh I almost forgot my onions and my peppers I've got a lot of onions in here Let's get there some onions on there a little bit of color with the peppers and my fajita is ready.
And we are good to go, you guys. Let me just move this out of the way. So you can see everything that's going on here. And let's take a bite of that delicious fajita. Oh, you guys, so good. Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have my friends over today. Mm. And so there you go. How easy was that? We did it on the microwave. We didn't get messy at all, really. Um, no oils, no frying. Everything cooked and to perfection. And relatively super easy. Took me a little bit longer because I'm chatting and everything like this. But if you were doing this yourself, you could easily get done in like, I think 40 minutes max. Mm, okay. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that today. I sure did. I'm going to move over here for a second. I have a couple more minutes left on the go live and see if you guys have any questions. And let me see if there's any questions or anything. Okay. Okay guys, well I'm gonna go. My friends are gonna be here in a few minutes and um, you can see all the mess in my house right now. <laughs> I hope you had a fun time today. Mm. And um, if you're in the neighborhood, come over and have margaritas and fajitas because that's what we're doing in my house today. Okay, bye you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be cooking at 9 p.m. I know it's late. You'll probably have had dinner, but I'll give you some great ideas for the weekend because I'm going to make hidden veggie marinara, hidden veggie uh, marinara um, and pasta. And I'm going to make a cake and we're going to have ice cream. And then of course we're doing a kind of an Italian theme. So we will be having wine. So I will see you. And of course, if you don't drink wine, no problem. We can have you know, you can have whatever you want. I'm just going to demonstrate something that will showcase the wine as well. Okay, thanks, you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.